Let's get to know wedding photographer Emily Green. In this interview, you'll get to know Emily on a personal and a professional level. Gelling with your photographer can actually make for better pictures. So it's always good to know the personality as well as the skills and the style of your photographer. Here are 21 questions with Emily Green. You post pictures of your pup and foster pups a lot. Can you share a little about that? Uh, yes, I do foster a lot of puppies. Um, I'm a little dog obsessed. I started fostering in February, so it's been around eight or nine months so far, and we've had, I think, 18 or 19 puppies. <laughs> Over quarantine, they would get adopted super fast, and so we would get one or two and then by the next week they were already adopted. So it was really nice during quarantine. Definitely took up most of my time. And then my own dog, Indy, is a golden retriever and she's three. And she loves having the puppies to play with. And it's kind of nice because I'm able to take pictures of the puppies and make them look good. And then the rescue can get them adopted faster. And it's just very rewarding and it's very fun. I have a little highlight on my Instagram page that shows all the puppies we've had and their names. And I took a little break from fostering the past few months. And I just actually got a new foster. His name is Duda. And he's actually six months old. I had to lock him out of my room. So hopefully he doesn't start barking. And then Indy is actually right behind me sleeping on the floor. So there might be a few uh, dog distractions, but hopefully we can make it through this interview. What song has been stuck in your head lately? Uh, I think since we've gotten the foster doodah, the name is so odd that there's a song, I don't even know the words, but it's something like doodah, doodah, something like campfire song. I don't even know, but that song has been stuck in my head because we say his name a lot. What are your tips for engagement photos? My tips for an engagement session, usually just make a day of it, like have dinner or drinks before, just relax. Um, everyone always says that they're so awkward in front of the camera and they hate having their picture taken, but it's, it's really easy. It's nothing to stress about. I'll tell you what to do, how to pose, uh, different little actions uh, that are just fun. Anyone can do it and anyone can look good. So just the biggest thing would be to not stress out about it and just have fun. Definitely wear something you feel pretty in, you feel comfortable in, and just have fun. Describe your style of photography. So my style of photography is definitely more on the candid side. I like to make it look effortless and classic, but also I'm a little bit like eclectic and fun. And then the editing style is kind of a brighter, airy, but also colorful. And I like to keep the skin tones true to their natural color, nothing too overly edited. And then I like to have a little bit of a glow to the pictures just to make it look kind of dreamy, but nothing too crazy. I don't want it to be something you look back at in 20 years and it looks too just a trend. How did you get into photography? So I think it all started in middle school. I got like a little pink digital camera and I would take pictures just of all my friends. And then I would just walk around my house and take pictures of just different things in nature, like some leaves or birds, just random things. And then I would use Picnic, which is a editing tool and I would edit them very badly. And then my first paid gig was in high school, I think I was 16, and a family friend wanted pictures of their family, I think for a Christmas card. So that was my first paid gig and took my sister and her boyfriend out right before that session kind of to practice and I would just make them pose kind of like an engagement session. And they're married now, but I would get Mark to like wear suspenders, wear all kind of things, and I would tell him I would write his English papers for him if he would come out and pose with Cami. Um, we just go to random fields and just practice different poses. <laughs> and then for wedding photography, I did my first wedding in college. I think I was 20 or 21. It was a lady who I took her headshot and her daughter was getting married. And it was a smaller wedding at her house in their backyard. And when she asked me, I told her no because I had never shot a wedding. I didn't know anything about weddings. I was totally inexperienced in that aspect. And so I told her no, but she somehow convinced me to do it because she didn't know anyone else and she just wanted me for 
a couple of hours to just capture the ceremony. And so I did that one and it, it went fine. And then I just kind of slowly started booking more weddings, which usually people second shoot before they lead shoot, but <laughs> I somehow <clears throat> did that a little backwards. Um, and then I started second shooting a lot and just each year it would almost double the amount of things I would book. Um, and so I've been doing it for about six years now and it's just grown a lot and here we are. What is your morning routine? So my morning routine, with a puppy, it's a little different. I usually wake up before seven to let the dogs out. And then my dog, Indy, she doesn't let me do anything until I feed her. So I have to feed her first and then I make coffee. And usually every day is different. I'll usually catch up with emails first and then editing pictures. I usually like to work out in the morning. But I'm not a big breakfast eater, so usually I wait till lunch to eat. And then also I have a part-time job at this place called Bar 3. So it's a workout studio in Baton Rouge, and they have chains all over the country. And I'll work the front desk there some weekday mornings, which I love to do, and I love to work out there. And then from there, usually just editing. Uh, sometimes I'll have a session, and then handle the dogs <laughs> usually takes up a lot of time, too. Any tricks for getting a disinterested groom to enjoy an engagement session? Usually, I can read their body language, see if they're comfortable or not. But if not, then I'll try and ask them kind of what they want to do, what they have in mind. Usually, if they have an idea, I'll just roll with it. And sometimes it's really cute and unique. Sometimes it's not, but I'll still photograph it anyway and see how it comes out. And then just try to have fun. Um, I don't do anything that is too much work. It's always fun and easy. And if they're really uninterested and they're not having it, I'll just work faster and try to get them out and they can go home <laughs> sooner. But I usually have really good couples and they are super easy to work with. So I've never had anyone that's too, tr too much trouble. So it's been good. <laughs> what is your favorite place to vacation? I think I'd have to say the beach which is kind of basic, but I love hot weather, I love the ocean, and it's it's not too far from here. So that's probably my favorite place and most convenient. If I could fly across the country or across the world, then I would definitely choose that. But <laughs> for now, the beach is uh, my favorite place. Finish this sentence. My best clients always ask. I would have to say ask for a wedding planner recommendation because usually if they don't have a wedding planner then the scheduling and the timeline kind of up to me um, and so just having a wedding planner saves me so much time and takes a lot of pressure off of me and I get to focus on photography because scheduling I can I can help out and tell you how much time I need or tell you when the best time to do certain things are but for the whole timeline of the day there's so many different things that go into it so many different vendors and so usually whenever it's all up to me then it's a little bit stressful but couples that hire a wedding planner i i love that so i definitely recommend y'all <laughs> to everyone but if they don't have one i can manage it's fine uh, but that's something that helps out a lot what are your hobbies my hobbies fostering puppies definitely i like to read a lot i set a challenge this year for 40 books and i think with quarantine i am at 42 or 43 that i've read so far so i'm a little ahead of schedule on my reading challenge and then I like to garden a little, not very good. I did a little herb garden, some basil and mint and sage. And then I like to be outside, I like to take the dogs on walks, go eat with friends. Anything outside I like to do, but it usually involves dogs. So a dog friendly place is the best thing. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Tell us a duty that you have on wedding day that most people don't know about. I do a lot of straightening the dress or the train of the dress. That's kind of non-stop, which most people don't think about. It's a lot of up and down. And then also sometimes I'm the only one who knows how to put in the veil the right way and then how to maybe how to bustle the dress, sometimes turn into a little mini wedding coordinator in those aspects. So I think that's one thing most people don't know about that I do. What is your favorite organizational tool? Probably I would say HoneyBook, which is a kind of like a creative business management uh, software. And I can do all my invoices through there and they 
handle all of the payment schedules um, and then I send questionnaires. It keeps me from like double booking weddings or sessions and it definitely just keeps me way more organized because I don't have an assistant or anyone and it's just me and so HoneyBook is well worth um, the fee I pay for that. And then also Pixie Set, which is what I use to send my pictures in galleries, super easy. And then they have like a print store option on there, which is really nice. People can order prints directly from their gallery. So that is another time saving thing for me. How do you stay energized during a long wedding day? So for a long wedding day, usually I'll drink a Celsius in the morning, which is like a, a healthier energy drink. And it has a lot of caffeine in it. So it usually keeps me going for a long time. And then I'll eat something really filling right before the wedding. And I'll definitely bring snacks and then just drink a ton of water throughout the day. Make sure that I have comfortable shoes on. And then usually I can last till midnight or so. What is your favorite New Orleans restaurant? Probably I would say Pesh, which is like a seafood restaurant. They have an appetizer that's called fried bread. That is amazing. And then also their crab claws are amazing. And then their fish, all of their fish entrees are incredible. Can't really go wrong with anything on the menu there. But there's so many restaurants, I could choose like 20. Teach us something that you wish everyone knew about photography in one minute. One thing I wish everyone knew probably would be that for a photography business, it's maybe half actual photography and then it's half business. And so you have to really know the skill and then you have to really know how to run a business, which I don't think everyone knows. And I didn't know, but I went to MBA school, which I feel like helped a lot. And I had a business minor in college and a studio art major. And so kind of know, but it, it's mainly just trial and error and just doing it yourself and learning from others. But probably one thing I wish everyone knew. And then also something that's kind of funny. A lot of people say, oh, your camera is so good. <laughs> but you have to know how to work the camera. You have to know how to pose. You have to know how to get a good composition. So it's a lot more than just a good camera, which is just funny, but something that a lot of people tell me. <laughs> tell us your favorite New Orleans backdrop for engagement pictures. It's a toss up. Usually I try to do both City Park and the French Quarter. If you can do both, I would recommend it. Both are gorgeous. City Park has the prettiest trees. It's more of like a nature vibe. And then the French Quarter has a lot of color. You can just walk down the streets. It's a lot of fun. Um, and then around every corner is a pretty backdrop on a million different colored little houses. And then sometimes you can see like the taller buildings in the background. So it's more of like a city look, but I love both equally, I think. <laughs> I don't know if I could choose my favorite. So usually if people can do both or want to do both, then I'd recommend that. Give me three words that describe your style of photography. Dreamy, effortless, and captivating. So it looks very easy and effortless, but there's actually a lot of thought and work um, put into it. What's your favorite quarantine project? I've done a lot of things. I like to stay busy and I like a lot of crafts. I think my favorite recently is embroidering. I just started actually a few weeks ago, so I guess not technically quarantine. But, and the only thing I've done is embroider dog bandanas, but that's a lot of fun, I like that. And then I did a few things in the backyard. I have a little wooden table that I sanded and then stained and kind of sealed it. And then I have this little dirt patch under this palm tree that I put these little like stone pavers and made it look a little prettier. I also did a lot of puzzles, <laughs> but I think my favorite is embroidering. It's a fun little new skill that I learned. What is your Enneagram type? My Enneagram type is type nine, I'm pretty sure. And that's the one that I always relate to the most. Really hate conflict. I like everything to be peaceful, I'm um, very go with the flow, and so I think nine, I'm pretty sure. There was a few others that I related to a little bit, but it's always been the most to the type nine. What is your favorite business book? I think I would say Big Magic by um, Elizabeth Gilbert. Uh, that one was really good, just like gets you to want to move out of your comfort zone, just inspires you to do more. I haven't really read 
a ton of business books. I've only read a handful, but I do like to listen to podcasts. There's a couple of local photographers that I listen to their podcasts. One is Catherine Guidry. She has Mistakes Make Magic, which is really good. And then Jordan Heffler has um, Do What You Want Radio, which I like to listen to people who are more local, a little bit more relatable. But yeah, I love podcasts. Where can we find you on social media? You can find me on Instagram at Emily Green Photo. There's no E on green and it's just photo it's not photography which is kind of a funny story i was gonna do photography but there was already an account named emily green photography and it's this girl that she lives in the uk and she already had the name so i went with emily green photo which now i love more but she sometimes gets emails that were meant for me and then i'll sometimes one time i got a a wedding inquiry from for a wedding in england (laughs) but it wasn't for me it was for her and so we, we've chatted a bunch. We keep in touch. And I love her work. But So it's just Emily Green Photo on Instagram, Facebook. And my website is emilygreenphoto.com. And then my dog's Instagram is Allie and Indy. And they have way more followers than me. They had a few little cute videos kind of go viral. And so I kind of try to get free stuff for them through their Instagram. <laughs> They're little dog influencers. And then they also, I just made them a TikTok, which is fun. And there's, their TikTok is also Allie and Indy. Emily, thank you so much for being on our show. I know our guests enjoyed getting to know your personality. Thank you all for watching and happy wedding planning.